Pixie Waste and now we have the Disney Pixar Movie Collection Finding Dory. Here we go. Dory was a little blue tang. She lived with her parents in a beautiful coral cave surrounded by seagrass. From a very young age, Dory had trouble remembering things. Hi, I'm Dory, she would say when she met someone new. And then she would tell them that she had a short-term memory loss. Dory's parents worried about their forgetful daughter and did everything they could to stop her from getting lost. But one day, Dory got separated from her parents and couldn't find her way back home. Before long, she was lost and alone. It was getting dark, so Dory swam under a rock and tried to sleep. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, she sang quietly to herself as she closed her eyes. Dory just kept on swimming and swimming, getting further and further away from her home. The time passed and Dory grew up. But she still asked every fish she met if they had seen her parents. None of them had. Hi, I've lost my family, Dory would say. Can you help me? Where did you see them last? The fish would ask. Well, uh, funny story, but, uh, I forgot. Poor Dory had forgotten where she came from and why she was lost. One day, while Dory was swimming along, she looked up and saw a boat speed by. Just then, she swam headfirst into a clownfish who was yelling something about his son, Nemo. They took him away, the clownfish cried. I have to find the boat. A boat, said Dory. I've seen a boat. Dory and the clownfish, whose name was Marlin, swam off towards the boat in search of Nemo. One year later, long after Marlin and Dory had brought Nemo back, the three friends still lived together on the coral reef. They had a happy and colourful home and had lots of fun together. Sometimes Dory would swim away on her own, so Marlin and Nemo had to keep a close eye on her. Dory was very happy and had forgotten to ask for help to find her parents. Marlin and Nemo were all the family she needed. One day, Nemo's school teacher, Mr. Ray, took his class to watch the stingrays migrating back home. Dory went along as a teaching assistant. It was a wonderful sight, hundreds of stingrays flapping their huge wings and swimming, singing as they swam. Dory was amazed. Mr. Ray warned his class not to get too close to the stingrays because their flapping caused a strong current in the water called an undertow. The undertow could sweep any little fish away. But in her amazement, Dory forgot Mr. Ray's warning. She swam too close to the stingrays and before anybody could help, she was swept away in the undertow. Dory's world spun around her and then faded to black. When Dory opened her eyes, Nemo, Mr. Ray and the students were peering down at her. Mr. Ray told the children to give Dory some room. As, she, as her eyes flustered open, Dory quietly murmured something under her breath. Only Nemo heard it. The jewel of Morro Bay, California, Nemo repeated. Later, back home, Nemo reminded Dory that she had muttered as she was waking up. It took Dory a moment to realise what it meant, but suddenly she knew. The jewel of Morro Bay was her home. She remembered her parents. My family, Dory cried. I remember my family. All these sudden memories sent Dory into a spin. She swam straight to the edge of the reef. Marlin and Nemo chased after her. I have a family, Dory called back to them. They don't know where I am, let's go. Dory, 
California is all the way across the ocean, said Marlin. Dory stopped swimming and looked back at her friends. Please, she said. All I know is that I miss them. I didn't know what that felt like. Do you know what that feels like? Marlin looked at Nemo, the son he had once lost across the ocean. Yes, said Marlin. I know what that feels like. Please, Marlin, said Dory. I can't find them on my own. I'll forget. Please help me find my family. Yeah, Dad, added Nemo. You can get us all the way across the ocean, right? No, answered Marlin, sighing. But I know a guy. Marlin, Nemo and Dory hitched a ride across the ocean with their old friend, Crush the Turtle. When they arrived in Morro Bay, they found themselves surrounded by rubbish. This feels familiar, said Dory. Dory suddenly remembered something else. When she had first lost her parents, she had asked the crabs that lived here for help. Just then, a giant squid appeared out of nowhere and chased Marlin, Nemo and Dory. The trio swam as fast as they could escape. After they had escaped the clutches of the squid, Marlin was upset. Nemo had almost been badly hurt. Dory tried to comfort Nemo, but in his moment of worry, Marlin snapped at her. Go wait over there and forget, Marlin said. It's what you do best. Dory was sad that she had upset Marlin. She was determined to make it up to him, so she swam off to look for help. Just then, Dory heard a loud voice in the distance saying, Welcome to the Marine Life Institute, where we believe in rescue, rehabilitation and release. Dory swam to the surface and Marlin and Nemo caught up with her. Guys, I found help, Dory cried. Look out, yelled Marlin, as a boat appeared behind Dory. She was scooped up by a human and carried away. Don't worry, Dory, a panicked Marlin called after her. Stay calm, we'll come and find you. The next thing Dory knew, she had a tag clipped to her fin and was dropped into a tank. Suddenly, an octopus appeared. He had one tentacle missing. He was a septopus. He reached one of his long tentacles towards Dory. Name's Hank, he said. Hank explained that Dory was in quarantine and the tag was a transport tag. It meant she was going to an aquarium in Cleveland. Cleveland? gasped Dory. No, I can't go to Cleveland. I have to get to the Jewel of Morro Bay, California. That's this place, said Hank. The Marine Life Institute. The Jewel of Morro Bay, California. You're here. Hank wanted Dory's orange tag so that he could go and live on his own in a glass tank in Cleveland. He didn't like living with the other fish. Dory explained that she needed to find her parents, so Hank grumpily agreed to a deal. He would help Dory, and then she would give him the tag. Hank scooped Dory up in a water-filled coffee pot and they set off. Hank carried Dory to a map of the MLI, the Marine Life Institute. Dory spotted a purple shell on the map which caused another memory to pop into her head. She remembered that her mother had loved purple shells. Dory remembered collecting shells as a child. Her parents had used the shells to make a path to lead Dory back home if she ever got lost. Dory snapped out of her memory and saw an MLI staff member walking by carrying a bucket. Hank hid, but Dory read the word on the bucket. It said, Destiny. Suddenly, Dory felt it was very important that she get into that bucket, so she did. Hank followed as fast as he could as she was carried away. Dory was tipped from the bucket into a large pool and Hank followed close behind. The pool was home to a giant whale shark called Destiny, who couldn't see very well and often swam into things. Her neighbour was a beluga whale called Bailey. He was at the MLI because he had bumped his head. He thought he had lost his 
echolocation ability, which helped him to see things that were far away. Destiny realised that she had known Dory when they were young. Dory had lived in the open ocean exhibit and they used to talk to each other through the pipes. Dory had to get to the open ocean exhibit. She was sure that's where her parents would be. On their way to the open ocean exhibit, Dory led Hank in the wrong direction and they ended up in a touch pool. Small and grabby hands came at them from above. It was terrifying. Hank hid under a rock and wouldn't come out. I'm sorry, Hank, said Dory. I'm sorry I can't remember, right? Just then, Dory remembered that she had once said the same thing to her parents. Her mother had said that Dory didn't need to be sorry. You know what you need to do, Dory's mother had said. Just keep swimming. Hank, we've got to keep swimming, Dory cried, but Hank still didn't want to move. I know you're scared, said Dory, but you can't give up. Follow me. Dory grabbed Hank's tentacle and they raced across the touch pool, but one of the children poked Hank. This caused his octopus ink to ooze out and turn the whole pool black. The kids all shouted in shock and ran away. Hank and Dory weren't in danger anymore. Wow, said Hank, stunned. You, you know, you, you got us out of here. Meanwhile, outside the bay, Marlon and Nemo had met a bird called Becky, who carried them into the MLI inside a bucket. Marlon was terrified, but he knew it was the only way to find Dory. Inside the MLI, before reaching the exhibits, Becky spotted some spilled popcorn on the ground. She left Marlon and Nemo hanging on a tree branch and flew down for a feed. Marlon nudged the bucket forwards into, until the branch pulled under the weight and the two fish were flung into a tank at the gift shop. They didn't know what to do next. They were very worried about Dory. She would definitely have an idea of what to do if we were here, said Marlon. I don't know how she does that. I don't think she knows, Dad, said Nemo. She just does. Marlon knew that Nemo was right. What would Dory do, asked Nemo. Marlon realised that Dory would simply look at the first thing she saw and... Just then, Marlon spotted a line of water jets leading to an outdoor pool exhibit. He sighed. Dory would do it, Nemo said with a smile. With that, father and son leapt towards the water jets. Each jet propelled them on to the next until they landed safely in the exhibit. They made it! At that moment, Hank and Dory had finally reached the open ocean exhibit. Dory couldn't believe she was about to meet her parents. She turned to Hank. They're actually down there, aren't they? I hope I can find them. Knowing you, said Hank, I'm lacking your chances. Now, go get your family. With that, Dory gave Hank her transport tag and Hank dropped her into the water. Dory swam down through the clear, cool tank. At the bottom, she spotted a trail of seashells, just like the ones she remembered from her childhood. This was her home. Just then, Dory saw a purple shell near the entrance to a pipe. She remembered that her parents had warned her not to go near the pipe, as the strong undertow could carry her away. Dory remembered with a shock that she had tried to collect this purple shell for her mother and been sucked into the pipe. It was my fault, Dory whispered. My parents, I lost them. Dory didn't know what to do next. This was her home, but there were no blue tangs here. A small crab told Dory that all the blue tangs had been taken to quarantine, ready to be shipped to the aquarium in Cleveland. What? No, cried Dory, but I, I just got here. The crab told Dory that it was easy to get to quarantine through the pipes. It's two lefts and a right, the crab said. Dory looked at the pipe entrance, gathering her courage and squeezed through the grate into the darkness. Okay, she told herself, I can do this. 
two lefts and a right. But before long, Dory forgot how many lefts she had already taken. She was lost. She began to panic, but then she remembered her friends, Destiny and Bailey. They could, she could call to them through the pipes. Destiny! Dory called in her best whale voice. Dory? A voice answered. It was Destiny. Destiny had an idea. Bailey could use his echolocation to find Dory and give her directions. He just had to make an ooh sound and echoes would come back to him from far away. It was like seeing a picture in his head. Bailey still believed his echolocation was broken, but Destiny soon convinced him to try. After a few attempts, it finally worked. He could see Dory and the whole pipe system. He began to give Dory directions. Dory followed Bailey's directions and bumped straight into Marlin and Nemo. They had swum into the pipes to search for their friend. You found me, Dory cried. Marlin wanted them all to head home, but Dory stopped him. My parents are here, she said. You found your parents? Nemo asked, amazed. Dory explained everything that had happened, and the three of them made their way towards quarantine. The journey was much easier now that Dory had some company. Dory, Marlin, and Nemo made it to quarantine and leapt into one of the fish tanks. They saw with a shock that the tank of blue tanks had already been loaded on the truck to Cleveland. Suddenly, Hank appeared. Hank, we need to get in that tank, said Dory. That rhymed. Hank lifted Dory, Marlin, and Nemo into a coffee pot and put them into the tank on the truck. The other blue tanks recognised Dory, but they had sad news. Dory's parents had left for the open ocean exhibit and come to quarantine years ago. Nobody knew where they were now. Dory was heartbroken. She drifted slowly back into the waiting coffee pot. Hank scooped it up and backed out of the truck. Hank looked down into the coffee pot. Where's everybody else? he asked. Marlin and Nemo were still inside the truck. Before Hank could do anything else, a member of the MLI staff grabbed him. The coffee pot fell to the floor. Dory spilled into a drain which took her out of the MLI and back into the ocean. Once again, Dory was alone and lost. In the bay outside the MLI, Dory swam through the water with no idea what to do. She began to panic. She was scared that she would forget everybody again. But then Dory spotted something. It was a trail of shells. Dory liked shells, so she followed the trail. Just then, two shapes emerged from the darkness. It was her parents. Dory's parents had been creating shell pathways all this time in the hope that Dory would see them and remember. It's you, it's really you, cried Dory as she burst into tears. Oh honey, you found us, said Dory's mum. And you know why you found us? Because you remembered. You remembered in your own amazing Dory way. Dory was so happy to be back with her family again, but she suddenly remembered Marlin and Nemo. She had to go back and save them. Dory and her parents rushed towards the MLI walls, but saw with horror that the truck was pulling away. Marlin and Nemo were inside. Dory swam around in a panic, trying to think of a plan. Suddenly, she remembered her friends, Destiny and Bailey. They could help. Destiny, called Dory in her whale voice. Dory? Destiny answered. Bailey used his echolocation and saw that Dory was just outside the MLI. The two whales leapt over the wall and into the open ocean to help their little friend. Bailey used his echolocation to look for the truck. The friends raced after it and caught up just before a bridge. Dory had an idea. They had to stop the traffic, so she asked some nearby otters to climb up onto the bridge and cuddle. The sight of the cute otters made the drivers, including the truck driver, come skidding to a halt. 
Destiny used her tail to flip Dory up towards the bridge. And Osha caught Dory, opened the truck back doors and put her inside. The plan had worked. Inside the truck, Dory was surprised to see Hank. He had sneaked on board. He lifted Dory into the tank with Marlin and Nemo. You came back, cried Nemo. Of course, Dory said. I couldn't leave my family. But just then, Destiny called from the ocean to tell Dory that the traffic at the front of the holdup was starting to move again. Marlin had a plan. He called to Becky, who arrived and scooped Marlin and Nemo into the, her bucket. No, no, wait, cried Marlin. We don't have Dory. But Becky didn't stop. She dropped Marlin and Nemo into the ocean. Marlin told Becky to go back and get Dory. So she headed back to the truck. In the ocean, Marlin and Nemo met Destiny and Bailey. Then Marlin spotted the two blue tanks with them and was amazed. They were Dory's parents. Becky landed in the truck and Hank reached for Dory to put her in the bucket, but Dory stopped him. You're not going to Cleveland, she said. You're coming to the ocean with me. Hank wasn't sure at first, but Dory soon convinced him that living with friends was much better than being alone in the tank. But just then the driver slammed the back doors shut. Dory, Hank and Becky were trapped inside. Hank slipped out of the truck through a vent and spread himself across the windscreen. The shocked driver pulled over and got out. Hank climbed into the driver's seat and locked the doors. Hank grabbed Dory from the tank and plopped her into a cup of water on the dashboard. Then, as the driver yelled from the side of the road, Hank started to drive the truck. Hank said Dory, I'm going to ask you to do something crazy. Hank smiled. He knew what to do. Back in the water, Dory's family watched as Hank drove the truck off the bridge and into the ocean. The doors flew open and all the fish spilled out into the waves. They were free. Marlon, Nemo and Dory headed back home across the ocean and they took all their new family and friends with them. Hank, Destiny, Bailey and Dory's parents all lived together in their new home. Dory was happier than she had ever been. She could now swim off on her own sometimes because she always remembered how to get back to her huge family. I'll see you in a while, guys, Dory said one day. I've got something I want to do. But Marlon still worried that Dory would get lost, so he followed her. He stayed a good distance behind so that Dory wouldn't see him. He watched as she swam to the edge of the reef and looked out at the ocean. Hey, Marlin, said Dory. She somehow knew he was there. Oh, said Marlin. Hello, Dory. Marlin joined Dory and they gazed out into the blue. Wow, it really is quite a view, said Marlin. Yep, said Dory. So is this one, Marlin said as he turned round and saw that everyone else had followed Dory too. Dory looked back at her whole family and smiled. Unforgettable, she said. Wow, Dory is such a cool fish. Well, thanks for watching everyone. You can hit like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.